Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. And we are broadcasting live from the beautiful ThinkTech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. My special guest today has and continues to be a legendary journalist in Hawaii for decades. She is Pamela Young, and today we are going beyond mixed plate. Pamela, hey. <laughs> so good to see you. Thank you for inviting me to your favorite beach. Yes, yes. I forgot to bring my son hat. <laughs> it's a beautiful day. It is, it is. <laughs> Pamela, we, we have so much to talk about. I want to first start by asking you about your early years growing up. Uh, well, my family grew up in uh, Palama, Kalihi, yeah. and then later on moved to Kaimaki. Um, I am the youngest of three girls. Great. And um, I had a pretty happy and inspirational childhood. So what schools did you attend? I went to uh, Liki Liki, uh, Lilio Kalani, which doesn't exist anymore, and then Kalani. I am a product of public school. <laughs> I went public. <laughs> and then what, what colleges did you attend? Uh, I went to San Francisco State, U UH for one year, and then transferred to San Francisco State, and then stayed there for my master's. And I did my TA work at uh, Berkeley. Okay. Uh, before I um, settled in San Francisco and stayed there for 13 years. Pamela, I have to ask you, what was the first job that you ever had in your life? Uh, my first job um, probably traumatized me for the rest of my <laughs> life. I was the Easter Bunny at the McInerney store in Kaimaki. It's not there anymore, but I would dress up in this huge bunny suit and the kids would come and sit on my lap, those that weren't screaming in terror. Uh, but it was a fun job and um, that's where I learned to, uh, I guess, greet the public. <laughs> <laughs> so you traumatized the kids. I hope I didn't. I hope they're all okay and getting therapy. <laughs> so your mom, you said you're, you have you and two other sisters? Right. And your mom, I have a picture of you uh -huh. and your mom. What kind of person is your mom? Uh, my mom was very hardworking. She, um, you know, had two jobs, supported two families, my, my dad's family and also her own family. Um, and I was the youngest of three girls. And what really kind of shaped our, our family more than anything, I think, is that my middle sister was born blind. And when you have a, a disabled person in your family, that kind of changes the dynamic and everyone kind of switches their roles. So I roomed with her. So I sort of knew that um, my role was to support her. Um, she was four years older. And back then, they didn't have a lot of Braille books. So I read a lot of her lessons to her. So I was reading four years above my, my grade, wow. uh, which was not a big thing for me then. It was just something that I had to do. But I think it really helped me in my schooling and my understanding um, of uh, where we are in life and what the possibilities are. What else did you learn from your sister? Well, she, um, she taught me um, the classics. Um, she, had to, she went to a different school, on Diamond Head School for the Deaf and Blind, where she was taught that you have no, no limits. Wow, great. And so she taught that to me. And so um, uh, she taught me how to love opera, how to love art, um, how to read um, the classics. Yeah. So I was reading you know, Dostoevsky in the sixth grade, uh, which was not a big deal. You just, you just did it. <laughs> and also uh, when she learned a foreign language, I, learned, I had to learn the foreign language because I had to teach it to her. Yeah. So, um, so a lot of my schooling was, was due to her. Cool. Let's talk about your longtime husband, Gary Sprinkle. Uh -huh. How did you guys meet? Well, I was working in San Francisco, um, in television, and when I decided to move back to Hawaii, uh, a good friend of ours, um, Grant Conchi, who was a cameraman at um, Channel uh, 9, yeah. uh, was working on a documentary. And he had never done that before, so he called me and said, can you take a look at the video? Can, can you see how we might be able to do something? 
So I was a co-producer with him, and I was in, at the station every night, and Gary was there every night, <laughs> and we would go out together in a group, and then after a while, it was just the two of us <laughs> going out, and, uh, and it stuck. Well, you guys are perfect soulmates. You know, why do you guys get along so great together for all these decades? I, I think because we work at it. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's a rare thing for somebody in the same industry, especially television, because you're dealing with some pretty heavy egos yeah. and um, stress. But I think we know how to support each other. And whenever he was out on a project, um, I I would know how to support him. and. He's especially very supportive of me um, now that I'm still doing these shows. After he retired from television, he learned how to be a photographer. Jeez. So he does a lot of my shooting. He's my chief engineer and uh, my, my editor. And um, so we're still working together. Um, it's still, we still, you know, have questions about who's really the boss <laughs> on a project. But but I think we we've worked it out after after thirty five years. So we we know how to communicate, and that's the be, the best thing. I just how to communicate with each other. You guys are fantastic. You guys make such Thanks. a great team. Now, after you graduated college, you spent you spent time working in San Francisco. Um, yes, actually, um, it's funny. You know, in high school, I knew I was going to be a journalist. But when I went to college, and this was you know, in the late sixties. I decided I wanted to be a dancer. This is what I was going to do for love. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to be a dancer. And, um, and my parents were very, it's like, what? <laughs> How can you make money from it? But I did that and I got a master's degree there because my plan was to dance professionally and then teach in college. And then when I did get my master's and I was offered a job to teach in college, I said, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. And, um, it just so happened uh, an opening was at KPIX, the CBS affiliate in San Francisco. So I auditioned and I got in. I was back in journalism and everything started rolling again. And it was just this natural transition. And then when you came back to Hawaii, you started your journalism TV career at Channel 2. At Channel 2. Um, and um, it was, but I was a crime reporter. Really? Um, <laughs> You know, I think every good journalist has to start off as a general assignment, right? doing a little bit of everything and being versatile in all of them. But uh, it was really our news director, Wally Zimmerman, who had just made Joe Moore the anchor, the wow. news anchor. And he wanted to sort of, so sort of how, how you build an offense around the quarterback. Yeah. He wanted to build the team around Joe. So he asked uh, Ray Lovell and me to come up with signature feature series. So that's how Mixed Plate and Ray Lovell's journal came about. Wow. To be at the end of the show, something and with something light and something that Joe could comment on. <laughs> Interesting hearing the beginnings. I mean, that's like the beginnings of Joe Moore as well. Uh, yes. I mean, it was um, perfect chemistry. Yeah. And then you, you spent a lot of years at KITV. Mm -hmm. Tell me about those years. Um, again, we were hired by Wally Zimmerman. Wow. And um, very, by then, I think Mixed Plate was already a brand. And so that's what I was hired to do, to do, do that on the news and also to do specials. And then when Gary came on board, we were um, hired to um, anchor the 5 o'clock news. Yeah, you and Gary, you guys co-anchored for many, many years. Um, almost two decades. So how, I mean, how was that anchoring with your husband? You know, people <laughs> keep saying, how can you... Stand to work together and then be together for all that. And it's not so. We would come to work in the same car. He'd go do his thing. I would do my <laughs> thing. And we wouldn't see each other until maybe half an hour before the show. Then we'd do the show and then leave in the same car. <laughs> so that was basically, so we weren't really, you know, in each other's pockets for all that time. I think we just assumed that that's you guys were. <laughs> no, because, um, you know, we had a lot of work to do yeah. um, because back then, you know, anchors also did a lot of reporting and, and we also did our separate shows. So we were very busy. Once we got into the office, we were in our different zones. Okay, got it. So, Pamela, I heard, I heard that Jason Momoa and Rihanna were like <laughs> super, super excited to meet you. Oh, of course they were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
No, I, I interviewed Rihanna once, and I doubt if she knows my name anymore. Jason, I've known since he was 19, and he's, I, I was, I'm good friends with his Hanai dads. So I've seen him from teenager to the success that he is today. Uh, and he's been a lot of fun to be around. I, I heard Rihanna wanted to do a duet with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I doubt it. <laughs> I, doubt, I would have been flattered to do it, but uh, she was very sweet. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have a, a preconception of their image, but um, she was very sweet and, and actually kind of shy. Yeah, and you know, when she came to Hawaii for a concert, I went. It was a fantastic concert. Mm -hmm. Loved Rihanna. Yeah. Okay, so most recently, mm -hmm. you just came back from France because you have an upcoming mix plate. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your, your France trip. Um, well, since we did a Pearl Harbor special uh, a few years ago, I kept in touch with some of the veterans. And okay. so I found out about this event. It's the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Bruyere and um, the rescue of the Lost Battalion. Um, two very important events in the Nice French campaign. So... France wanted to do this huge thing because very few of the veterans are still alive. So they um, did ceremonies in Bruyere to honor the Nisei and their families. So um, that's something that we wanted to do um, for these veterans um, and to also help some of their ancestors know more about what they did because when the Nisei came back, a lot of them just didn't want to talk about it. That's, yeah. that's, not, that's not the Japanese way. You don't want to talk about negative things. You don't want to relive the horrors of the war. So they didn't say anything. So a lot of the people we traveled with, their children and their grandchildren, wanted to go back to hear these stories that the French people still talk about today. Mm. They had no problem sharing their experiences. And it's in their school books. They, they teach their children this and their grandchildren. So you say the word Nisei in France, they know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And, and, and it's just so heartwarming to see how they embrace um, all of us that, that have come. And they're so grateful because, uh, as one of them said, you know, liberté is the first word in their motto. And they said, the Nisei gave us that, liberté. Wow. And my friend Guillaume Maman was with you on yes, that trip. Yes, uh -huh, and his well, wife. Teresa. And his wife's grandfather is buried at Epinal. Wow. Um, and we were there when she visited the grave for the first time. So it was very emotional for, for everyone. This is going to be a part of our Pearl Harbor Week um, events. It'll be air on December 5th. Great. Well, totally looking forward to that. I mean, you've done so many Mixed Plate episodes. I mean, how many years has Mixed Plate been going on for? Uh, this year we're celebrating the 35th anniversary. Wow. So out of all of the Mixed Plate episodes that you've done, what's one of your highlights of doing those shows you know there's so many i'd like to think it's always going to be the next one yeah <laughs> but i do remember um doing the canonizations of father damien and mother marianne and um and actually the year before we did a separate trip where i uh, had an audience with pope john paul ii before he was made a saint wow um and that was um that was something i'll always remember um, because it wasn't in a group, it was face to face, and he was so kind. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I'll always remember that as a highlight. One of my friends, Glenn Maderos. I mean, everybody loves Glenn Maderos. Have you? Did you ever travel with Glenn? I went to Spain with him really? on one of his first tours. <laughs> wow! When there were all these Spanish girls crowding around, and Glenn, 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 <laughs> and uh, he was a huge star back then. I mean, he's still is in, yeah. in our eyes. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, they were, we had to run from, from the bus to, because there were girls trying to grab his clothes, his hair. <laughs> and, and it, it was a remarkable uh, uh, event, a remarkable time in his life, and we were happy that we were there to record it. Awesome. Pamela, we're going to take a quick break, and when okay. we come back, we're going to continue going beyond Mixed Plate. Okay, great. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Pamela Young. We will be back in a quick minute. Thanks to our Think Tech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mon Lee and the Friends of Think Tech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, 
Collateral Analytics, The Cook Foundation, Duane Carisu, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group Limited, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today has and continues to be a legendary journalist in Hawaii for decades. She is Pamela Young, and today we are going beyond McSplain. Pamela, in my book, Beyond the Lines, I talk a lot about creating a superior culture of excellence, discipline, details, and you definitely go beyond the lines, and you have that superior culture. Thank you. Tell me, tell <laughs> me about your culture of excellence. Uh, well, I never really thought of it that way. Um, you know, I live from project to project, and I, I do have a, an MO um, that as soon as I know that I'm going to be doing something, I just immerse myself. I read everything that I can. If I'm going to a country, I try to learn the language. Um, I try to interview everybody locally that I can, and I try to block out what I'm, outline everything. Because once you travel, you don't have the opportunity to go back if you missed something, so you've got to get it the first time. Yeah. So preparation is, is a huge thing. Uh, but yeah, I pretty much um, make it my life for that time. I, and my, it drives my husband crazy. <laughs> but that's kind of the way that you have to do it. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you've done so many amazing episodes. And it's how do you keep out doing what you've done? How do you do that? You know, I, I never really um, think of it that way. Um, I, I think what's changed in, in the past few years, you know, in the beginning, you try to establish yourself and your brand. And so you, you put your name out there and you do a lot of uppers. Where you, you stand up in front of the camera and, you, you know, so that people know you and they recognize you. And, and so you're basically selling yourself as a product. Now, uh, I'm more interested in the story to tell. And that's how I pretty much choose the projects, um, that if it's a good story. And really, once the story is there, it kind of unfolds, and you don't really have to try to outdo yeah. yourself. It just it presents itself, and I've been so lucky to get the subject matter and the help and, and God's blessings and everything kind of falls into place so that you can do the best that you can do. Well, you work so hard. I mean, I mean, that's why you get lucky, because you work so hard. You create your luck. Well, I think if you just open the channels yeah. and, and let people know that you're, you know, you're open to new ideas. And, um, and it's really, and the thing is, I really can't take credit for a lot of this because I can't do it without help. Yeah. And, and other people, and other people's uh, commitment to it and and their artistry if I'm working with a cameraman or, or a graphic artist um, you, you this is a team thing you don't do it by yourself so a lot of it is luck for sure okay and, and team yes and teamwork <laughs> now uh, Pamela if your life was a movie what would the title be um, well let me see <laughs> Besides speed, speed two. Um, well, I, I've actually been asked to write a book about some of my experiences, and so I thought, okay, a good title would be um, Triple Fire, uh, and you've had Alice. Alice Enoy. So yep. in astrology, I'm a triple fire, an Aries, Sagittarius, Leo, and that amounts to a lot of energy, and I don't think I could do anything without that energy. Um, growing up, people with that much Fire, get into trouble because they don't know where you know. Unfortunately, I had dance. Yeah. Um. And and now that's I channel that into into my project. So it'd be triple fire. I love hearing that. So you you're because you need to be doing you need to be doing something all the time. Is that really it? 
I, I think creative people need a creative outlet. Whether it's doing a show or cooking a meal or just doing your hair, you know, you, um, you need to be creating. Otherwise, a part of you shrivels up. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, need, I need these little projects uh, to, keep, to keep that energy going and to keep it circulating. Got it. So what's, uh, what would you say is a valuable lesson you learned in your life? Um, I learned that um, I, couldn't, I wouldn't be where I am without the help of others. Um, when I started off in San Francisco, which is a very competitive market, um, I did not get any help from women really? and minorities. And that shocked me coming from Hawaii, yeah. where everyone is, is so aloha, um, that people felt that I was competition. And it was disheartening, but I also got a lot of mentorship. So, um, so I decided then, if I continued in this industry, I was going to help people, women, and anybody coming in. So I did have a mentorship program for a while uh, with kids from uh, UAH and Chaminade and HPU. Um, so anyone who, who does ask, um, I'm there for them. Um, and, I, and I never think of anyone younger um, as competition. Yeah. So one of the, thing, the things you have to learn if, if you're going to be a decent human being. Um, and uh, as the, I'm the um, VP, the local VP for the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, I encourage people to enter the Emmys. Yeah. And I tell them how I enter and the process. Because when they win, Hawaii wins. Yeah. And, and that's my goal. So, um, so yeah, it's, um, you, you have to... Any success that you you got to push it on. You got to you have to pay it forward and make sure other people gain the insight because you know we've all gone through the trials. We've all learned valuable lessons, and you need to share that. Well, I love hearing that you know you're mentoring so many people from all different stations. But they got to ask. Yeah. There's so many people who don't want to ask because you know the shame, the local <laughs> style, you know, and and. Or, or they think that there are, you know, motives, ulterior motives. But, you know, they just have to ask. That's yeah. all. And you're so cool. You're such a nice oh, person. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, Thank you, you are. <laughs> Pamela. It's part of my legendary status, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> you are legendary. <laughs> so, Pamela, what's the best advice you've ever received in your life? Uh, let's see. Well, I think my husband um, constantly... Um, advises me to take it easy and to smell the roses because um, I think anyone who is obsessive about it, you know, you're, you've got your blinders on and you forget to see the other things along the way. Um, and when you're on a job, especially in a foreign country, you don't really take the time to, to enjoy what's there because you're looking through the lens of a camera or you're, you're looking through an outline of what, what What's going to go in the show? What can I do? And, and, you know, you really do have to take the time to enjoy life. Yeah, because you've traveled to so many countries, and everybody just assumes that you're having the greatest time doing all of these shows. But I do, but at the same time, it, it's like it's different when you're working yeah. there. And there are also some parts of travel that, that I don't include. If I go to a third world country, I, I don't do things about how how poor people are. I mean, I may touch upon that as part of their spiritual growth, but I don't focus on the controversial subjects because that's not what Mixed Plate is all about. Um, it's about people showing joy and uh, living through their culture and, um, and just enjoying life. And so that, that's what Mixed Plate is all about. And, and so, you know, I, I try not to do the negative thing. What's a... Uh... What's a fear of yours? Um, I think, um, you know, in this age and time, I, I fear that people will forget um, the reason that we need to love each other. I just see so much hate and fear and division in life. And, um, and it's, uh, it's taking over a lot of aspects of life. It's, it's like 
us and them. And um, that unity isn't there anymore. And I know I'm thinking, I'm thinking very broad terms, but that's the fear I have, um, that times are changing and not necessarily um, for good. And we just have to remember to love each other. Love that. What's the, what's the biggest adversities or biggest challenges that you had to overcome in your own life? Well, I think the, the, um, the shock, the culture shock of moving to the mainland and realizing not everybody lives the Aloha spirit and having to adjust to that. And, um, and you know, it either buries you or you overcome it. And so I've had to do that in work. And so I've had to um, adjust my dealings, you know, in my life now to embrace that, and to make sure that, that aloha is always there. Yeah, got it. What, um, what's something about yourself that you would like to improve on? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Uh, let's see, well, it's about 20 years, <laughs> and then maybe a couple inches on my waistline. Uh, I, I wish that I, that I could embrace a little more um, rest time okay. and not be so, um, so focused on, on the work. I mean, I know that's a, it's a good thing, but it, it would be, I, I'd love to spend more time with my granddaughter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my, Gary's always telling me, ease off on the throttle. So that's what, I, that's what I'd like to do. What's a future goal of yours? Well, I'm hoping that um, more stories will come to me that mean something. I love doing mixed plate, and, and that's, you know, that's a fun time. Yeah. But the, this whole France experience has taught me that um, I have a wonderful platform being on television, as you do. And that is to validate people. And once you stop validating yourself, then you can focus on, on bringing other people's message and other people's story who don't have the luxury of having this, this voice. So I'm hoping that those stories will come to me um, and that um, <clears throat> they'll mean something to people. Well, I found all of your Mixed Plate episodes very you know, educational, very meaningful. I like hearing that you want to go deeper and deeper, you know, in the future. I think especially now um, when people are, are suspicious and, and so xenophobic, yeah. um, I, want to, I want to bring different cultures, different religions, different belief systems um, into the airwaves because we need that. I'm going to look forward to that. And Pamela, I want to thank, thank you. you for joining thank me you. on the show today. Thank you. Can I, can I get my swimsuit out now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dive in. <laughs> thank you so much, Pamela. So much fun with thank you. Thank you, Rusty. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKamori.com. And my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Pamela and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.